we still in the month of South Africa. We still exhibiting, experiencing South Africa the whole of this month, April. And we are going to have a conversation on the history and the culture of South Africans. Anytime the history and culture of South Africans comes to mind or comes to play, Brenda Fosu's music comes to one other aspect. Nyashi, let me have the song at the background again so that you would have a feel of some of the rich South African music. And then we're also going to exhibit you to the culture, among other things that we are also going to have. So uh, can we have it at the background, please, at the moment? And then I will introduce whom my guest is and whom I'll be talking to about the history and the culture of South Africa. A very beautiful lady that most of you have seen her flyers already. So I've seen my friend dancing, so I'm going to just go close to her. Um, Mapite Kwame. Um, the, I, I was telling her of her that Kwame sound Ghanaian. She's married to an Ivorian. Yes. So the husband is called Mr. Kwame. Mm -hmm. So that's why she's having Kwame. Uh, she's a secret, political secretary. Yes, first uh, secretary political. First secretary political for the South African High Commission in Ghana. Yes. How's been your stay in Ghana? Oh, I've loved it. This is my fourth year. Mm. Uh, it's gone by very fast. I yeah. think it's because I've been enjoying it. Mm. I love Ghana, the weather, the people, the food. Yeah. I must say you are very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Gosh. Ah. <laughs> so which, which, which of the, if the groups, of the ethnic groups do you belong to? In South Africa? Yes. Soto. Soto. Yes, I'm Soto. They say the Soto people are very beautiful. Yeah, they are. We oh. are beautiful. And then we have the Kosa people. The Kosa people as well. Very beautiful. The Zulu. Ah, I am South Zulu. Africans are I beautiful. I am Zulu. <laughs> I am Zulu by heart, by passion and everything. I am Zulu. Uh, you know, uh, is it one of the years... Um, one of the Big Brother Africa guys, and that was the very last time we had a Big Brother Africa. Mm -hmm. It was with this Zulu guy who did a song. Zulu, 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 Zulu. Everybody's a Zulu. I became a Zulu by that part. Okay, so. okay. I hope you are doing good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm well. I'm okay. well. Thank you. A anytime South Africa comes to mind, what people say is that, because you watch um, Nollywood movies, no, Hollywood movies, sorry, and anytime you want to portray Africa, it is South African that is being portrayed. What is that history? What is that culture that has now become the icon that is representing Africa now? Yeah, South Africa has a very rich history and culture. Um, our history encompasses our political struggles against colonialism and apartheid, which eventually led to the attainment of our freedom in 1994 mm. and our path towards democracy. And as well, our cultural diversity is also very rich um, and it extends beyond our borders and is composed of influences from neighboring mm. African countries mm. Mm. and even other parts of the globe. And I think it's important to locate um, this and, and mention this so that uh, we are aware of what makes South Africa the country that it is today. Mm what makes us unique mm. as South Africans. And uh, I will expand on this as we carry on uh, with the interview. Mm. Um, but yes, yeah, South Africa has a very rich history um, on the continent. It's um, one of the biggest countries economically after Nigeria. Uh, other African countries have looked to South Africa. I think it's because of those political challenges that we overcame. They look to us to also advise and mm -hmm. guide them on conflict challenges that they also find themselves in. I mean, just if you look at the international relations arena, South Africa has mediated in conflicts um, in Zimbabwe, the DRC, Burundi, uh, Sudan. So um, our place on the continent um, is is respected and um, we are you know there in the southern part of Africa but uh, we still have a prominent role to play on the continent mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. they are doing very instrumental when it comes to these things and the impact on the continent but so let me ask you personally as a South African when you come out of South Africa and you go to other flag in Ghana and you see people who the, your cultural values in highest thing to be a representation of the continent. What 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 does it mean to you? 
But what bearings does it bring to you, the individual, that you go outside South Africa mm -hmm. and see that people are promoting South African activities, even though they are not South Africans? Yes, no, I, I mean, it instills pride, you mm. know, as a South African to see that our uh, fashion, our music is being consumed. Mm. Um, South African music is enjoyed um, the world over, especially on the continent. From the likes of Brenda Fassi, and I'm wearing mm. her t-shirt um, this morning, to Huma Sigela, Miriam Mageba, mm. uh, Kaifa Semenya, and now most recently with Master KG yes. and his song yes. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That was popular the world mm. over, and you know, as, as people found solace in it, mm. uh, especially during 2020 with the COVID-19 COVID pandemic sure. and the challenges that the world faced. So it makes me proud to, as a South African, to see uh, South African arts and culture being appreciated in other parts of the continent. And as well in South Africa, we also appreciate um, other African cultures, their food, their cuisine. Mm. I mean, we love Ghanaian material and kente, we wear it. So yes. We'll come and look at the, the what inspired some of these songs and the, some of these musicians in the past. But South Africa has come a long way. What was colonialism like? Because we read the books and then we have been exposed to how the Dutch got themselves and that was it the free orange state and then how the Afrikaners and other people were there before the British came in to settle and how the flags of South Africa needed to be changed to represent the multicultural setting of South Africans now. I'll be able to tell how either beta or worse of colonization was like for Ghana, but for South Africa, what is it like? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it, it, I have to go all the way back to 1652. Mm. When you talk about colonization in South Africa, mm. you have to start all the way back in 1652 okay. when Jan van Riebeck and the Dutch settlers arrived mm. at the Cape and they set up a uh, uh, um, port mm -hmm. uh, for passing ships that were on their way to the east. Yes. Yes. So you had the arrival of the Dutch and Jan van Riebeck in, in 1652. And obviously when they landed at the Cape, um, they were confronted by the original inhabitants mm. of Southern Africa and South Africa at the time, the Khoi Khoi. And as the settlers took arable land from the, for themselves, they drove the Khoi Khoi into the interior. Mm. And with the development of the port that they had set up, it meant that there was a demand for labor. Mm. And so the Dutch settlers then got that labor from the territories in the East Indies, mm. from Madagascar and even East Africa. And um, more um, European settlers also arrived in South Africa, including the British. Mm. And so at the time you had um, with the British arrival, now there was a tussle mm -hmm. between them and the Dutch fighting over the Cape, mm -hmm. with the Cape changing hands between the British and the Dutch and going back to the mm -hmm. Dutch and mm -hmm. back to the British. And you found the Dutch settlers then moving into the interior okay. of South Africa and coming across other indigenous South Africans, such as Bantu speaking South Africans, such as myself. Mm -hmm. And then as well, um, with that came the discovery of um, diamonds and gold in the 1860s and the mm. 1880s, respectively. And um, that meant that the settlers were then discovering mm. other parts of South Africa, Natal, the Orange Free State, um, obviously the mm. Cape where they were already there, and uh, the Transvaal. Okay. Um, and that also then um, meant that uh, the conflict between the Boers, uh, the Dutch people, and um, the English, mm. the British, uh, w kept on carrying on. And this then ultimately led to the Anglo-Boer War of mm. 1899 to mm. 1902, or what you call the South Africa War. And that saw the British being victorious in that war, but... Um, that victory proved to be illusory because just seven years later, uh, Britain then relinquished her imperial role in South Africa. And South Africa then became a union mm. in 1910, governed by the Afrikaners who 
are descendants of the Dutch Dutch. settlers who arrived in the 1650s. Yes. Mm. So uh, um, the British have their way, but you still have your dent to the Dutch people. Exactly, exactly. And funny enough, paradoxically, depending on how one would look at it, Mm -hmm. you could either say South Africa was the first African country Mm -hmm. uh, to receive independence from a colonial power in 1910 when Britain relinquished her imperial rule. Mm -hmm. Or you could say we were the last because we only attained our freedom and became a democracy in 1994. And by that time, other African countries Mm -hmm. had well become Mm -hmm. self-governing nation states. Um, And so it depends how you look at it. 1910... 1994 but mm-hmm. i mean at the end of the day we only really attained our freedom in 1994 when all south africans could participate in our democracy people uh begin that is uh, look at political watchers people that um observe the colonization processes in in the continent and it seems that the language has been that the delay in the in the total freedom and independence of south africa in 1994 has brought uh, these level of development in South Africa because we allowed our colonial masters to stay for a long while to develop the country before they finally left. Is, is it something that is worth you South Africans or you feel that no or you're feeling maybe the, the political observers outside South Africa are telling the story wrongly? I would say that um, the difference between um, colonization in South Africa and other parts of Africa is that with us, the European settlers who arrived in the 1650s stayed. Mm. They never left. Whereas in other parts of the continent, um, when uh, Ghana achieved its independence in 1957, the rest of the continent followed in the 1960s. Mm. There was that wave, you know, the colonial uh, masters and rulers left. Uh, you, you never really had a big white settler population mm. like you found in South Africa and to a smaller extent Zimbabwe and even Kenya. Mm. In South Africa, they stayed and they are South African and um, along with the indigenous um, uh, South Africans, black, uh, India, everybody were able to help build the country. The, the, the settlement of the Europeans and other things associated with it, their governance structure, anytime we bring about it, then brings about the famous apartheid and segregation issues in South Africa where you go online and you see certain masters that says white only lacks the pavements in south africa here the the movie long walk to freedom um that we saw we even saw washrooms in facilities and even access to courtrooms mm-hmm. what is a, a problem mm-hmm. Let, let's understand the, the, the story and see the, the the picture well when it comes to the segregation and apartheid system in south africa Yes, um, segregation predates apartheid Mm. in South Africa. So the um, only difference is that apartheid codified Mm. um, the segregationist policies that Mm. were already in existence, uh, which discriminated against non-white South African citizens living in South Africa. So when the National Party came into power Mm. in 1948, they brought with them an institution of apartheid, which was a set of laws Mm. that made apartheid um, legal. Legal, exactly. Um, And yes, um, those laws uh, are wide Mm -hmm. uh, from the Group Areas Act of 1950, which only designated um, black South Africans uh, to live in certain Mm. parts of the country, to the Prohibition of Mixed Marriages Act of Mm. 1949, which didn't allow black and white people and people across the color line to marry to the Bantu education of 1953, which um, gave black South Africans an inferior education and facilities. Um, So that was the system of apartheid. It was institutionalized. It uh, ran deep throughout the country and it was overcome through struggle Mm. and um, a, a, a lot of fighting, you know, from the defiance campaign of mm. the ANC in 1952 mm. 
to the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, to the Soweto student uprisings mm, of mm. 1976, to the turbulent years of the 1980s and the sanctions that were imposed on the apartheid uh, government and to the period of 1990 to 1993 where we started negotiating mm. uh, with the apartheid uh, government, the white minority government and black uh, political leaders Jesus. such as Nelson Mandela and black political parties were then unbanned so that the negotiation, pro the negotiation processes Can could continue. go ahead. Yes, which eventually culminated in our elections in 1994. So apartheid, um, like I say, it was a varied and uh, deep-rooted system and it took uh, a, a lot of people and, and, and years of struggle uh, to overcome it, um, you know, from the formation of the ANC in 1912, and mm. the ANC was formed as a response of the already existing segregationist mm. policies, which I mentioned, and um, other black uh, political movements and parties, such as the Pan-Africanist Congress, uh, the United Democratic Front, uh, Azapo, the Black Sash, the Black Consciousness Movement of mm. Steve Biko. Um, so all these organizations, all these leaders, and even the world then started coming on board and condemning the The, 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 U, the UN not to even um, exactly. remove South Africa exactly. at a point. Mm -hmm. mm. It's, it's interesting. Like, when you put in perspective the multicultural and ethnic city of South Africa, and the apartheid system. When I go to South Africa today, 15th April, 2021, would I ever see any effect or what has been some of the damaging situation that that apartheid system brought to South Africans? Yeah, no, you'll definitely see some of the effects. I mean, we all know that South Africa struggles with the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment mm. and some of those uh, stem from our history of segregating and discriminating against non-white South Africans, not giving them their basic human rights, not give them access to opportunities. So you will still see that you will even see it in the spatial development of mm. the country. You know, you'll see that um, some people still live um, in the periphery and mm. far away mm. from the mm. cities and from um, opportunities where they can find work. So the remnants of, of what we've gone through as a country are still there and, and, and we're still um, trying every single day to uh, create a more equal and inclusive society. Hmm. In, in creating more equal and inclusive society, that uh, political forebears like Nelson Mandela, among his other black uh, politicians started brought about a famous quote in 1964 during one of his trials mm -hmm. that i have dedicated my life to the struggle of the african people i have fought against white domination and i have fought against black domination i have uh, cherished the ideal of democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities it is in the ideal for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it's, but if needs be, it is an ideal which I am prepared mm -hmm. to die for. Mm -hmm. This is a strong comment, a strong word by somebody that is not even certain of what the future of mm. South Africans will be. Mm. But here still, he was committed to the fight mm. of equalism in South Africa. This is who, who I see him to be. Mm. Who is Nelson Mandela? Yeah, no, he was a, a principled man. Uh, he was highly dedicated to democracy, the rule of law and equality. Mm. And yes, Soon after he, he, he gave that sp famous speech, he then spent 27 years of his life in prison mm. because he was fighting against the injustices of the apartheid mm. system. Um, he was a philanthropist, uh, a revolutionary leader, and he belonged to the African National Congress, which, mm. was, fo which was formed in 1912. Mm. Um, 
and uh, he was the first uh, democratically elected president of South Africa and he served from 1994 mm. to 1999 and he is respected um, very much in South Africa and all over mm. the world as mm. you know. Um, the UN even declared the 18th of July, which is his birthday, as International Nelson Mandela, Mandela Day. Day. We were all supposed to give 67 minutes of our time doing something for the next person. Mm. So uh, he is definitely one of our iconic leaders, if not the most iconic. I mean, you mentioned South Africa and Nelson Mandela's Mandela. name is mm. immediately mentioned, you know, it's synonymous, mm. South Africa, mm. Nelson Mandela. Mm. So, yes. And interesting, 27 years imprisonment, comes back, be elected as a democratic president, and yes, though, set for a term. Exactly. <sighs> we are in Africa, we are on the continent. People won't do this. What informed such a decision? Um, like I say, he was committed to democracy and the rule of law. And for him, it wasn't about being in power and, you know, enjoying um, the benefits that come with that. He knew that there were other younger leaders in the ANC who could also serve the country just as well. He knew that his um, role in this world really was to um, help us dismantle the shackles of colonialism and apartheid. And he'd done his, his, his time and he'd done his bit and he saw it fit to just serve for one term to even show other leaders that, you know, you can serve one term and bar out gracefully. Mm. Mm. It, it hurts that Nelson Mandela bowed out, but his compatriots um, in, in other countries within the continent probably didn't tell the same lie. But oh, I, I'm, I'm not seeing the, uh, the Nelson Mandela iconic characteristics, excuse my language, with other successive presidents of South Africa. The ANC is enjoying the Mandela fame, but still, it seems they are now on treachery grounds. Can we say that the Mandela name is being lived by young politicians, young leaders, and even successive presidents after Mandela? Uh, there are many uh, good leaders in South Africa, uh, currently within and outside of the ruling party. Um, you, you know, Thabo Mbeki was a very good president. Our current president right now is also... Uh, doing a, a, a very good job in, in leading the country. Like his name, um, Cyril Mafusa. Yes, and he was very close mm. uh, with um, Nelson Mandela. Uh, Nelson Mandela certainly left very big shoes to fill, uh, but I believe that South Africa has very capable leadership. Mm, that was fantastic. Now, let's move to 27th of April, the Freedom Day. Um, I think that this is what cements our fight and struggle of, of equalism. That at the end of the day, we don't have whites and blacks. To us, it's, it's a significant day. It's something that has to be celebrated and lived. What happens normally on the Freedom Day? Yes, 27 of April is our Freedom Day, mm -hmm. our national day. Yours mm. is 6 March. 6 March, yeah. Yes, so that is the day that South Africans of all races, uh, from the age of 18 upwards, were able to cast their votes mm. uh, for the first time in a multi-party and democratic system. Mm. Um, so we celebrate that day because of the significance that it represents. You know, for so long, black South Africans and non-white South Africans were disenfranchised. Um, so that day is very special to us. Uh, usually uh, here in Ghana and even all over with our embassies, uh, we usually have what we call our National Day Celebration, mm. uh, which involves just inviting, um, you know, people in government, MPs, media, our friends, and just celebrating our national day, giving of speeches, mm -hmm. and just eating and, 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 and celebrating with our loved ones and friends. So that's what um, 27th of April So this year wouldn't be us. different? Uh, 
Uh, this year will be different. Even last year, we didn't have a national day mm. because of, of COVID. the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're following those safety measures and the protocols that have been put in place. Uh, but we're very thankful to Adowa TV mm -hmm. for dedicating the month of April to South Africa Month mm -hmm. because the month of April truly is special in the South African calendar. Mm. Now, talking about the specialities of South Africa, now let's talk about where I... I belong, mm -hmm. uh, the ethnic groups, mm -hmm. their uniqueness. Yes. Um, I am Zulu. Mm -hmm. What makes me Zulu? <laughs> what makes people differentiate the Zulian from a Tokta person mm -hmm. and any other? Um, we have about 11 languages. Mm -hmm. So aside their languages, what are the, the, the uniqueness and the beauty of these ethnic groups? Okay. So we have a variety of ethnic groups in South Africa and official 11 official languages mm -hmm. as you rightly said um uh, uh, remember i said that the first um inhabitants of south africa were the khoisan mm. of south africa and southern africa as a whole were the khoisan and then you also have bantu speaking mm. africans such as myself and in this group you will find basoto which mm. i belong to you'll find twana bedi Tosa, zulu Debele, mm. um, Tonga, and Venda, and some I of like, these. I like Tonga. Yes, and some of these. I've heard a Ghanaian song Tonga. Pardon? I've heard a Ghanaian song Tonga. No, right. I haven't I'll, heard I'll it. I'll play it for you after that. Interview. Okay, and some of these ethnic groups can be found in neighboring countries like in Lesotho, uh, Swaziland, Botswana, uh, Mozambique. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. You'll find Tonga people in Mozambique, obviously Basotho people in Lesotho, etc. And then uh, we also have white South Africans who are made up of English speaking South Africans and the Afrikaners and the Afrikaners and the English speaking South Africans mm. are obviously descendants of Europeans uh, who came to South Africa from the 1650s onwards. Then you also have um, the Cape Malays mm. and also the colored community. And as I said, remember the Cape Malays were brought as slaves okay. to work in the Cape mm. colony yeah. at the time. Mm. And you, we later uh, uh, have, Indi uh, have Indians as mm. well. We have a big Indian population. They were also brought in as uh, slaves and forced labor mm. uh, to work in the sugar plantations in, the K in KZN. And we also have a significant Chinese community, mm. which uh, is also multi-generational. Okay. So we are truly a rainbow nation. Mm. We're a melting pot of different races and ethnic groups all living together under one peaceful nation. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I'm, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be trying to slide into Cape Town maybe in a month or two. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful city. I'm looking forward to certain food and delicacies there. What should I open up to when I get to Cape Town? Well, Cape Town is obviously known for its wines mm. and its wine farms. We make the best wines in the world. Ah, I took so you should definitely and... visit a wine farm, mm. uh, go learn about winemaking mm -hmm. and uh, do some wine tasting as wow. well. Wow. Yes, it's very beautiful. So you should do that. Um, and, you know, some of our, our main staple food is called BAP. I think it's mm. similar to bang bang yeah. uh -huh. So that is eaten across the color line. Everybody loves bap. Mm. Uh, usually we enjoy it with a good braai mm. because we, we, you call it barbecue. barbecue the rest yeah. of the world mm. calls it a barbecue. Mm. We call it a braai in South Africa. We love our braais mm. in South Africa. So usually you'll have bap with a with burovos and some gravy. We have umrusho, mm. which is my personal favorite. Mm. It's made from stamp and sugar beans. Okay. I hear that it was also Nelson Mandela's mm. personal favorite. Mm. So you have something in common with Nelson mm -hmm. Mandela. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have bubuoti, mm. which um, apparently originated from the Dutch, but the Cape Malay made it their own. It's basically just layers of minced meat that you cook in the oven. You spice it with mm. some medium heat curry, some turmeric, garlic mm, and mm. a lot of people also like adding raisins to it um, we have 
we eat a lot of vegetables in South Africa, spinach, cabbage, mm. uh, beetroot. Uh, most of our dishes always have uh, vegetables in them. Um, we we love fat cook, mm. which is uh, what you call boflot, yeah, Buflut, Ghana or yes. puff puff. Yeah. Yes, and we also love snacking on biltong wow. or druavos, which mm. is a sort of cured meat, mm. dried cured meat. Okay. Yes. Then there's a lot of things that we'll be looking out for when mm -hmm. you get that. Um, I, a friend, a friend says that anytime you watch wine tasting documentaries in South Africa, people are able to tell the name of the wine, the date it is made, among other things. It's one thing I'm looking forward to see when, when I come to South Africa. Now let's come to the cultural or festivals mm -hmm. in South Africa. You know, when we, we come down to Ghana, we are noted for a lot of our festivals. Yes. We are noted for Ujura, we are noted for the Bachocho Wamawa Festival, among other things. So what are some of the typical cultural festivals that we will see in South Africa? Yeah, we also have uh, quite a few festivals. Uh, we've got the um, Cape Town Minstrel Carnival, mm -hmm. which usually happens on the 2nd of every uh, year, mm. the 2nd of January uh, of every year. And that involves um, minstrels just... Um, dressing up and parading through the streets of mm. Cape Town, mm. playing traditional music, music. and jazz. Mm. Uh, it's a way of celebrating the emancipation of the slaves, the okay. Cape Malays okay. were enslaved. And uh, it attracts uh, lots of um, visitors, th that parade. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Cape Town International Jazz Festival, mm -hmm. which is a musical extravaganza, a two-day mm. musical extravaganza that sees local and international, international. artists mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. together, five different stages, performing for a crowd of over 30,000. Mm -hmm. That's quite popular, the Cape Town International mm -hmm. Jazz Festival. You've got the Grahamstown Arts Festival, mm -hmm. which is held in Grahamstown. That usually takes place in July. It's an 11-day long affair where we celebrate music, uh, performance art, street entertainment, mm -hmm. arts and crafts. And we have the Royal... Uh, reed dance mm. where you have Zulu maidens, over 10,000 of them donning traditional attire ah, Zulu and maidens. setting mm. off to the king's palace in KZN. Mm. So th that's just to name a few of some of the festivals mm. that we have. Hearing you, it's, it's obvious that most of these festivals are art and entertainment centered. Yes, that yes. is what brings people. So um, I, I don't know, you know, in, in Ghana, our festivals connote migration mm -hmm. where maybe the ethnic group came from and where they've come to settle so there's a significance of their migration into their their festivals mm. but with this ones you've mentioned they are they are purely arts yeah i i, I south africans are big on on, on arts and culture and music and mm. dance mm -hmm. <laughs> i think maybe that's that, that's, that's why okay. yes we take our our creative uh arts industry and sector uh, very seriously we're proud of uh, of our music and um our artists and yeah mm. now let's come to the music um uh master kg mm -hmm. jerusalem and other songs that are being played i the rhythm the kind of instruments the wedding and things that goes is there a particular school that maybe all those great musicians that have come from south africa like brenda like now currently um, master kg among others that they go for them to be imbibed in with the, the culture the setting of how the south african music should be it's just innate natural talent wow <laughs> yes it's just innate natural talent mm. yeah no, but like I said, um, we love our music. South Africans love their music. We love our dance. We have uh, various types of, of, of music, house music, mm. guaito music, Afro jazz, Afro pop sound. Mm. So, yeah. So which of them do you do you personally relate more to? I, I love all of them. I love uh, Hugh Masekela, Brenda Fassi, Miriam Makeba, Kaifa Semenya, mm. Jabu Kanile. Mm. So, I mean, those are the type of music that my parents listen to. That's the type of music I grew mm. up listening to. And I also love the new music that's mm. been coming up um, from Guaido when it started in the 1990s to house music to Ama Piano today. I love it all. 
Right. Salah says, so let, get um, uh, Master KG Jerusalem. Huh? And then when it's ready, you explain the song to us. But before that one is being played, let's, let's finally center on the movie industry and in South Africa. One movie that I watch all the time, I, I never get tired of watching is Sarafina. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Yeah, I also never get tired of watching Sarafina. I, I, I love Sarafina. So um, it's the, the, the movie is set in Soweto where my dad grew up. Um, and Soweto is one of the oldest townships in South Africa. Um, it's also the scene of the 1976 student uprisings mm. um, when um, black young South Africans were fighting against um, the Bantu education system and apartheid as mm. a whole and they saw it fit to go out into the streets and, 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 and protest. So Sarafina is a very beautiful movie. Um, uh, I love the actress Latambuli. Yes. And, Where is she now? Uh, she's still acting. She's still in South mm, Africa. Mm. Um, and and that movie was, I think, produced um, by her former husband. Yeah. Well, well, well. It is 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 an interesting movie. And then I, I'm surprised that till till now, you go to YouTube, you go to other places, and then Tarafina is still there. Freedom is coming. I know, I love her. all the music as it's, well. It, I love all the songs in that When they sing, it's, mm. some way, it's something else. It's, it's something fantastic. Yes, and it's made. It's been made into uh, plays as well, like mm. in theatres. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. It's a classic. It's definitely a classic. So, uh, so aside this movie that really talks about the, the cultural aspects and happenings of South Africa, um, I, have, I have watched other um, episodes of new series and things on... Um, um dstv mm -hmm. i have seen the is it the jacob's son or something mm -hmm. and other things but are, are they all also cultural centered movies or happenings yeah i mean all, all all our um movies and tv shows are about what's happening in south africa mm. whether it's uh based on history or um current uh state of events the south african film industry is 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 quite big it's growing um and south africa is a beautiful country to shoot even mm. um international so, yeah, people movies come have there, been uh, shot mm, there mm. hollywood movies have been shot there so like i said um government is committed to making the film and movie industry um you know successful in south africa and the sector is really being driven by young south africans who are creating opportunities for themselves yeah mm, mm, that is that is quite interesting mm. now let, let's let's come to master kg's uh, jerusalem so we play a bit of it and then you explain basically oh my goodness who said i know what the <laughs> lyrics mean so you did have right so let's 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 have it let's have it let's have it so so what the i believe that the word jerusalem uh, is like jerusalem Yes, yes. It's just saying Jerusalem is my home. Mm. Uh, don't leave me here. Um, my soul doesn't belong here. It wants to go home. Something like that. It, 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 it's obvious that most South Africans are religious people. Mm -hmm. They are Christians. So I, I look at the interpretation of some of the songs. I realize that they are all gospel songs. Yeah, it, it has a gospel and spiritual connotation to it, definitely. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. And like I say, it, it was actually quite pertinent that it came out last year and became such a hit last mm. year because, I mean, the the world was... It, it, we didn't all expect COVID-19 mm. and the challenges that it came with, with the loss of lives and livelihoods. So it was a nice song to find solace and comfort in. Mm. Thank you, Mapite um, Kwame, for your time. Uh, before I let you go, uh, we've been able to look at the South African history and culture mm -hmm. and everything that South Africa has got for us. Yeah. Um, I, I that is why I told Lupisi that anytime I have time to talk to the South African people here from the Commission, I feel they have to convince us more on why we have to come to South Africa or visit the okay. place. So, Tell your viewers out there why they, I need to visit South Africa. Oh my goodness, where do I start? I could go on and on. <laughs> South Africa is a very beautiful country. Mm -hmm. It's a big country. 
Uh, there are lots of places to visit in South Africa. We have nine provinces. We mm. call them provinces. You call them regions. regions We've got yeah. 16. We've got nine. I can't even say which one is more beautiful than the other mm. because they all have different things to offer. Whether you are somebody who's into nature mm. and adventure, then I would say check out Limpopo and Mpumalanga because mm. that's where we've got the Kruger National Park. Mm. You can go for a game reserve, safaris. Then if you're somebody who loves the beach and being close to the ocean, we've got uh, the Western Cape, we've mm. got Eastern Cape, and we've got uh, Guazulu Natal. And the three main cities there are uh, Cape Town, Durban, and Port Elizabeth. And of course, we all know about um, the infamous Table Mountain, mm. Robin Island. Go and visit. Go see when Nelson Mandela spent some of spent some time some quality time, time yeah <laughs> not quality time spent some time of his life in jail mm. and then of course if you love shopping and the hustle and bustle of a big city there's johannesburg with its mall of africa and Santon city mm. to do some shopping uh there's soweto to visit as well uh you can visit vilakazi street uh with uh, Nelson Mandela lived there on mm. his house is there on Villagazi Street so you can visit his home um, you can visit the Hector Peterson Museum to learn more about um, apartheid and our struggle for freedom. That is wonderful Opite. So we'll be looking forward and I, I believe at the time I come to Cape Town you should be in South Africa by then mm -hmm. so I take me to all these nine provinces mm -hmm. and let me expose myself to some of these wonderful places so thanks for your time this morning thank and you, enjoyed our conversation too as well um, so i think that um, on the 27th uh, of april that yes. is the freedoms day we will probably make a slide at the commission and mm -hmm. see what happens uh, on that particular day oh thank you yeah, very right. much thank so you. my peter kwame is the first secretary political for the south african um, high commission ghana uh, she's been taking us through the history and the culture of South Africa. She has exposed us to a lot, and then I'm grateful for the conversation. Let me say a very big happy belated birthday to Ni Suja Mensa the third. Ni Suja Mensa the third. And today happens to be the birthday too of a very good friend of mine, um, Benedicta Ajekum Kufo. Today is her birthday. And then today also happens the birthday of my sister, Mrs. Amelia Tego. She's in Texas in the US. A very big happy birthday to you. Enjoy your day. And on behalf of myself and the rest of the production crew, thanks for watching the show and see you tomorrow. Jerusalem.